Hello, my Choo Choo family. I'm your fun-loving happy vlogger, Tom Choo Choo. So October is like my favorite month because it's one month before my birthday. But more importantly, my favorite holiday is Halloween. So last year during this time, I had done a few mukbang videos with collaborators and also sharing some paranormal stories of my own. And if you're new to my channel, I lost all my old videos last year and also all my subscribers. But thanks to myself, I saved up all my old mukbang videos so I can upload them all again. What you're about to watch is a pre-keto mukbang videos. So don't ask me if they're keto because they're not. And now here's my throwback mukbang. Choo choo! Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom and today we're eating Wendy's. They came out with the spicy nuggets. I think they had that before. So today I'm just going to try a little bit of that. I got a four by four. Is that what they call? Um, It's $4 for four different meals. So I got the double stack, uh, which is cheeseburger with two patties <laughs> and also fries and also the spicy nuggets and uh, a drink. And I got the lemonade. Apparently they say it's a uh, handcrafted. I don't know. We'll see. And that only costs you $4. So it's a pretty nice meal. And just because I'm a fat ass, I, um, I grabbed a spicy chicken sandwich. Something happened before this episode. Uh, I was going to shoot a mukbang with friends and uh, we were talking about ghost stories, but the whole footage went out. Like we didn't record any of the footage. I clearly remembered I hit that recording button. Creepy, right? As you can see, I'm doing it by myself because Nobody really wanted to do it with me anymore after that incident happened. I guess my real life ghost stories really terrified people around me. I'm gonna try the double deck first. I'm so hungry. And I decided to do this mukbang during lunchtime. <laughs> Last time we did it, it was uh, during nighttime, and I guess something happened in the studio. Voila! So I don't freak out myself this time if I do it by myself, right? Well, I have you guys with me, so. Oh well. So I did try the spicy. Mmm! Mmm! It's good! It's not very spicy, but it's good. And then they have the creamy sriracha sauce. It's not spicy, but it gives you a kick. Mm. So have you guys encountered like real life incidents where you felt like there was something there? I'm sure you, you some people have felt it. Um, so if you don't want to hear the stories, today is not your day. But I'll try to make it as light as possible. But if it's really scary, don't hesitate. It's okay. I can lose a few views today. It's fine. Okay? Just don't freak out and never come back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to start something small, um, something light. I won't go into like a huge, crazy, real life stories, like how I usually do with my dreams. So I'll start with this one incident I, I encountered. I was working at a theater company and they were performing at the Alexandria Hotel in downtown LA. Alexandria Hotels, for those of you who don't know, they are the number two haunted uh, hotels in Los Angeles. I don't know which one was the first, but they say it's the second haunted. And we were performing in the ballroom, which it was the third floor. You know, there's a lot of stories about the elevator and also the ballroom, which I was performing. One rehearsal, I was the one who go in first. I opened the door and I turn on the green room, which is the backstage. Once I flicked through the lights, I saw a little girl wearing her overall just running down the hall and then make a right into the front stage. Yeah. 
But I was the first one who walked in, and people behind me weren't little girls. So where did I come from? So I asked the director. The director said most of the story that involves in the ballroom are with children running around, and I guess I saw one of them. It wasn't that scary, right? I just saw something over there. Yeah, it's no big deal. On the same week, yeah, you thought it's just gonna be over. I, we were performing on stage. There was this piece that was, we had to channel our ancestor, and the story was about like. Uh, grieving, celebrating with our culture and our 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 roots, you know. So we had to prepare to almost like having a ceremony of chanting to our ancestors. And we were all in backstage. I was standing in the first one, and uh, so we lined up on the backstage. And then we, I was the first one standing. So when the light uh, goes out, that's when we enter and we place ourselves before the light goes on. I was preparing for the emotions I need and expressions, and I knew there were three people behind me. And all of a sudden, I felt like this gentle tap on my back of my、uh, shoulder. I thought it was just the 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 other actors who was like, you know, giving me some energy. You know how actors are crazy like that. So I just I embraced it. Didn't say anything. I didn't even look back. I just felt it. And when the light goes out on stage, we went on to the stage and placed myself. I was positioned to stand far back towards the wall. So you know, I guess I was big and tall. And、uh, that hand that I felt never goes away. Like I felt like, you know, once we go on stage. Everyone would just be placing their positions in front of me, but I felt like that there's a hand that just constantly pushing me towards my position. And before the light turns on, I still can feel that hand touching me. Once the light turns on, I felt a tap, almost like a tap, and slowly the hand fades away. And the hand felt like a woman. And I remember there were three guys behind me, so that was weird. So I confronted to my director and say, "Hey, I、uh, I felt like I experienced something." And the director said, "Yes, in the ballroom there were a lot of incidents where they also see female spirits that wanders around in the theater and also in the ballroom, and sometimes you will hear piano playing in the ballroom, but there isn't any piano." Right, crazy. I guess some people have that intuition, you know, that you can feel the spirit. I guess I was born with that, or maybe I was just too tired. That's usually why I told people, like, I was just too tired. Maybe I just I was delusional or something. What do you think? I'm not scared of ghosts or anything, like paranormal activity, sleep paralysis. Oh, yes, sleep paralysis. I'm about to share another story for, for you, all of you. So one year, I was helping my friend because they had to travel to the Philippines. So I was there taking care of their house and also taking care of their cats. There were two. Before they left, they told me, "Oh, you know, the cats can be a little bit shy, and so the first two days you might not be able to see them because they will hide themselves." And you know, I had cats before, so I know how that feel. So I wasn't, it wasn't bothering me or anything. So the first day when I w- went in to the house, I I just decided to just stay over at the house because I was doing stuff in around the area, so it was perfect for me. The first night when I was sleeping, I didn't see the cats. I had this terrifying nightmare where I saw this woman. <clears throat> With long hair, almost. If you guys ever seen like the Korean or like the Japanese ghost stories, they will always have、uh, a woman with long hair and、uh, wearing white sheets of clothing and start trying to like choke you or try to like eat you up or whatever. And、uh, I saw this woman; she was screeching and screaming at me, going like this. 
I'm so good at it. And it was going towards me, and all of a sudden, I, I hear another side of me have cats screeching noises, too, to kind of top it off. So felt like, and then the the woman just vanished after the sound of the cats, and that's when I opened my eyes, and then I was paralyzed. I could not move anymore, and it was just weird because I felt the cats were, you know, screaming at the woman. So almost felt like this. So, and then the woman went away. That's when I wake up, and I couldn't move, and I was telling myself, okay. I guess something happened in this house. I, I would try to talk myself out of this. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. And all of a sudden, I could move again, and I looked to my left, up towards my bed. I saw these two cats who were just staring at me, like looking up and staring at me. I was like, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So I went back to sleep. And then, so the second day, nothing happened. I didn't see the cats. The third day, I saw the cats start climbing up to my bed,、uh, and、uh, they was try to sleep next to me. It was weird. Like the third day, I also have a little bit of like paralysis. Like I feel like my legs were numb. Maybe because the cats were sleeping right next to me, so my my legs just fell asleep when I wake up. But on the fifth day, so now I'm getting you know day day. The cats are getting used to me, and I'm getting used to cats. And now, on the fifth day or the sixth day, I don't remember. The cats were before I go to bed and sleep. The cats will hop on to the bed and start patrolling around my bed. I'm like, what's going on? So they would start patrolling. Felt like something might happen, and then they have to do this thing to just kind of clear out the energy. Then that's when I realized the cats were helping me on the first day. And something is in this room. And on the seventh day, eighth day, I remember there's starting. There's one night that one cat will hop onto the cabin that's closer to the window and start looking out the window and start hissing. Felt like something's down out there. Anyway, so so this happens for a couple weeks until my my friends came back. And then I addressed this issue to to them, and then they told me this house, there was one generation, there's one、uh, incident where the the landlord was abusive towards her mother, and I guess she something happened to her, and then she passed away. But she's very、uh, aggressive, and she was mean, I guess you know, like she was abusing to. Her mother, and then, then that's when I realized it might be her that was trying to scare me on the first day. It could be, it's not proven. It could be, right? But it happened to me. Was that scary? It wasn't scary. I don't think it was scary because it is what it is. So if you guys have watched my previous videos, um, you know I do tarot card readings, um. And there, I always felt like I have some kind of psychic ability at times, not all the time. So, get that, get that clear. <clears throat> and there's one time I was chatting with my friends, and all of a sudden there's this clear image that just came across my head, like in my imagination, that I felt like, ooh. I felt like a very strong energy that just trying to push into my brain. I decided to just tell my friend that what I just saw and something just happened, and I told him if I could ask him what this means. And he said, "Sure, of course, why not?" I said, "What's your relationship with the color of red?" Because there's this clear image that just tell me I have to confirm with you about this red energy before I tell you the next passage that I'm about to say. Like even coming out of my mouth at that time, I felt like I wasn't the one who's articulating the whole thing. So he say, um, his mom passed away, so his dad and him. 
decided not to wear anything red anymore because it would remind him of his mother. I was like, okay, how long had that been? And then he said, oh, it's been two years now. This is a friend that I don't know too much about. So by just telling me this, it was kind of ugh, eerie and creepy. And but I just felt like I need to pass on this message and said to him that you should start wearing red because red is a strong energy with you and that you need to honor your mom by wearing red and then he start like freaking out and he start crying and telling me like he really misses her and you know <laughs> and, and then after that he started wearing some red-ish stuff you know like a t-shirt or like a uh, sock or, or like a, even a bracelet he start getting better like his business start getting better his his I didn't know that he was depressed, so it was interesting how I saw him start becoming more uh, open and very and you know, healthier, healthier. And I was like, okay, this is something more than just tarot cards and more than just fortune telling. It, it's like I'm helping someone, but I don't know why I'm saying this and I'm doing this and this is weird. What do you guys think? Do you guys believe this? I mean, I sometimes even don't believe it. That's how I feel. And it's, it's, yeah. But some people would tell me like, oh, that's what all fortune tellers always say. Saying, oh, what's the relationship between you and this color? Or like, oh, something must have happened to you for you to become this way. I'm like, duh, aging. That's called aging, guys. So I felt like, oh, uh, yeah. But when you finally experience that, I can't explain it. So it's like, hmm. So if you think this is interesting for you, please leave comment below and like and subscribe and share and hit that notification button. If you like it, be sure to tell me, okay? <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.